Thank you for coming over here to listen to me uh, and my friends in the first post of Kamis. Before we move on, I would like to first extend my thanks to Toastmasters and to Merck, because this is the reason why we are here today. Our very special thanks goes to Kevin and Shirley, who will stand up, because they were our Toastmasters. think that spiritual and leadership could coexist. I see a couple of hands. That's, that's great. I feel the same. I think this is possible. But before we move on, anyone of you knows which symbol is that? Yin Yang. Oh, yes. We got the numbers done. Yes. Yin Yang is an ancient symbol from China. <coughs> it's the symbol of cosmic duality in cosmos and life. And the symbols have a lot of layers. Another meaning of this symbol is the visible and the invisible world in together. The reason I say that because spirituality is about the invisible world, from my point of view, in play in the visible world. We are all born with a soul to this world into the bodies. We possess a true self, a higher self, a higher kind of consciousness, as we can see. In, ch in early childhood, we acquire a false identity, which the psychologists call the personas. Because of our childhood decisions, we also develop, develop defense mechanisms. They form our identity, which is different from the true self. Then, in social life, we end up with a social projection or a social image of ourself. Does this not look like a masquerade indeed? For me it is. So what is spirituality? Spirituality is the journey from our project and the false identity into our true essence. It's a transformation. It's not a religion, it's an inner transformation. I talked about the visible and the invisible diversity, so a little part of my visible diversity. I come from Turkey, Turkey is just in the middle of the west and the east. I come from a city 8,000 years old. It's the neighboring city to the, um, to, the, to the homeland of philosophy. The father of philosophy was Milato, uh, in Milatos, it was Thales. The father of history, Homeros, he lived there and he used to call this place uh, a be the best climate in the world. And Victor Hugo used to uh, live there at some time, he was calling some, uh, he, this city a princess. Another part of my diversity, the visible diversity, is my background in the business. I've been in the business over the last 21 years. I joined Kamis eight years ago to lead the start of the, of the Kamis operations in Turkey. And that was the third stop after very fun of poker in my life. It was just a coincidence. It was great for me because I had the chance to lead three startups. I have experienced two acquisitions and two closures in my life as well. Very tough journey it was. However, it was very, very enriching for me. Have you ever seen this gentleman from the ancient world? Diogenes. Great, yes. This is in fact Diogenes. Diogenes lived in a city called Sinop in the north of Turkey. So, he, you see a lantern in his hand. With this lantern, he was walking in the city of Sinop 2,500 years ago, asking for true man. He was, in fact, asking for wisdom. He was after wisdom. This is a search for a meaning. The reason I talk about it is that my search for a meaning, as you can see in the Tigris statue of Rodin, started at the age of nine. I was really driving my mom crazy with the philosophical questions. Where do we come from? Why do I exist this way? Why do I exist this way? Why all this? Why, why, why? I never stopped uh, asking questions. She was crazy. Uh, she gave me good religious answers, I was never satisfied. So I kept asking and asking. I will learn later on that the answers will come in life through shocks. I say shocks because they don't mean bad. Some shocks are bad, some shocks are good. You can end up with bad people and experience true traumas, while on the contrary you can meet with groups, special leaders, people who have wisdom, they can change your life, and they create a positive shock. So shocks are not bad. They are there to hold the mirror to ourselves. 
because our situation is unfortunate but true, this is the case. You remember the true self, the false identity, and the project itself? That's how demon plays it. So the shocks are there to bring down our projections. I would like to talk to you about three shocks of my life that has really made me different in my life. The first one was in the military service. In Turkey, the military service is a must. I was there for one and a half years. I had a top assignment. Unfortunately, you cannot make a soldier out of me. I was asking, why am I here? Why am I have to go through this? It was tough on me. Maybe different than someone else, but it was tough on me. I started asking questions about the meaning of life. I started at that time looking for answers in the spiritual books. I studied uh, the Eastern teachings. I found that life is there to teach us something. Then I will learn in Pulse where I had my second shock that the experience in the military service indeed grew me stronger, which because the Pulse was the place where I was starting my leadership journey. I was very happy working there. I was uh, pretty successful getting the benefits, uh, the recognitions. I was happy there. The problem was that it was only my work and my peers at that time. I really lost the balance in my life. I was working to live, in fact. With a depression, I will learn that I have to, in fact, live to work. So, sorry, work to live. Because of this depression, I brought some discipline to my life and I changed really the way I operate because I was miserable. The third shot was in Kamis in 2011 and 12. As I said, I had the chance to lead the startup of this great company, that's how I joined the company. We were asked to start a benchmark plant. You know Kamis, best of the best, hire the best of the best people, best of everything in a very short time. So we were working like 14 to 16 hours a day with a great team. Some of them are still over here. And it was a great experience. I used, together with the team, my home, they used their homes like hotel for two years away from the families to start this. I had my son, my second child born at that time. Also, I had a, in the core family, a tough illness. That was really devastating for all the family. I had to stand, stand strong. In two years, we managed everything. It was really great in life and work. Then I was the one to fall down. The people around me, when they were also tired, very tired. When I fell down, I had little amount of people around me. So this experience was quite teaching for me. I was lucky because in Turkey, uh, the spirituality has a deep background. I met with good thought leaders, people of wisdom, spiritual gurus. I was able to smell and learn the unconditional love. It was really changing me at that time. With these three shots, I can very easily say that the first one told me the life is a theater to learn something. Then I have to take care about the work and life wellness. The other thing, everything happens for a reason. The problem with the third one is that the mind doesn't get it. You cannot really get it by your uh, mind. You can only understand it through your heart. I can say that I found my calling with the Torshak especially. My calling now is to make a positive difference in the lives of others for a better world because I think this is possible with leadership. All these that I'm gonna tell you now, I never planned for anything ten years ago. I'm an author to two books, one is spirituality, it's a map for the people, the other one is our own artificial intelligence, the science fiction model. I coached dozens of people with 2,500 hours. I uh, wrote more than 300 blogs in many sites. And I've been uh, coaching a lot of people for 2,500 hours. This was a great experience for me because with this experience, I was able to touch the lives of others. I feel very much blessed. We talked about spirituality so far, but let's talk a lot a bit about the life of a leader. There's a reason why I put this picture. Leadership is not easy. You have to act like a role model, you have to coach the others, develop the others, you have to act like a role model yourself, you have to behave, so success is not enough. You have to win together with the people, so you have to really control your egos as well. You have to deliver the results. It's not easy. 
it requires something beyond what is classically said IQ. Very recently, we are lucky that the last 10, 15 years we talk about EQ, the emotion quotient. Yet, spiritual quotient is more important from my point of view because it gives you the resilience. I call these three cardinal virtues from my point of view inner balance, the prudence in our actions, the outer balance, in fact, and the harmony with the universe because there's something called the zeitgeist, the spirit of time, and when it comes, yeah, my story has changed. I do plan for it. From my point of view, I believe that, and I think that, spirituality could and should exist. Because leadership is about influence. People and leaders with influence can change the world. It can only come with wisdom. And wisdom can come with the spiritual portion. That's a journey. In order to start this journey, it's just about holding up a mirror to yourself and making a journey from your project self to your true self. Thank you for listening to me.